John Keeley for OFB TV, the inaugural episode for the 2011-2012 hockey season here in Washington, coming to you from our favorite sports bar, Frankovic's, uh, here in Ellicott City, Maryland. Ed Frankovic of WNST Sports Radio in Baltimore, and I'm also joined by two of my favorite members of Caps Media, Sky Kirstein of 106.7 The Fan, and Tom Clancy, the novelist. Actually, no, Ted Starkey <laughs> of the Washington Times will be talking a little bit about his uh, prolific writing this summer. Uh, guys, <clears throat> hockey is back, and uh, I know we're all excited about it. Let's start with uh, a basic question about the offseason. Give me your grades for the Capitals uh, this offseason, A, B, or C, and, and your reasons why. And let's start with our host, Ed. I give uh, the Caps an A. George McVie did a great job, went out and got a goalie who can steal games in the playoffs, something they need. And I think the acquisitions of Joel Ward, Jeff Halpern, Roman Hamrick, Troy Brower, these kind of guys – are guys that know how to win in the playoffs and, and can play a, a defensive style that they need to win. Okay. I think it's a probably an A minus. The only question I have about the team is basically uh, they never address that second line center issue, but obviously Vokun is a big upgrade in that. Uh, I think Roman Hammer would be good on the defense, and I think the Caps probably a better team than they were last year. Right. Scott? I gave them a B before they stole Thomas Vokun. Okay. <laughs> Vokun, one year deal, $1.5 million steal. Steal. Yeah. On the conference call afterwards, he sounded really, really bitter, and that's a great thing. <laughs> He's going to be motivated. He's going to be ready to play every night. He wants that big deal next year, and that's exactly what this team needs, more motivated players. I give them an A. I love Troy Brower. Right. If you're going to play him on the second line or the first line, yeah. he's going to bring that grittiness, that scoring, most importantly, that Stanley Cup ring to the table. Joel Ward. Roman Hammerlick, I'm still 50-50 about. I love bringing Jeff Halpern on that fourth line. They have scoring now all up and down that lineup, and that's going to be really fun to see. I, I'm going to go with an A, uh, but I'm going to bring up a name that nobody else has mentioned yet, and that's Brooks Light. And I know when we were talking last spring, we're thinking, well, free agent, he's going to be gone. And I said to you guys, I want him back. He's a warrior. He's a workout demon. And, and a lot of us think he probably maybe should have been named captain. Anyway, I think it's fantastic that that guy is back. I think he's an important cog to this team. And again, you, you throw in Vokun, Hammerlick, uh, I think pretty much consensus grade, A minus going all the way around. But my question to you is where is Brooks like most effective? Third line. And we might see him. At center? No, I think he's a wing. All right. I think he's a wing. Uh, and I think we might see him on that third line a lot this year. We'll see. Uh, let's go. Next question. Alexander Ovechkin, I think that's an, another hot topic. A big, big drop-off last year. A lot of concerns on a lot of different fronts. Uh, he's reported to Washington this year, fit, excited, determined, saying all the right things. All right, tell me, each of you, how many goals, what's his point total, and where does he finish in the heart race? Ed? I'm going to go with 45 goals, 105 points. I got him winning the heart. All right. Okay. I'll agree with that. The 45, I'll say uh, 95 total points and third in the hard voting. Okay. I'll say he gets 55 goals this year, probably 40 assists, so what, 95 points or so. I'll say he's first in the heart race. Why? He is motivated. He's embarrassed with the numbers he yeah. put up last year. He'll be ready to go this year. I'm, 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 I'm aligned with Sky here. I see him actually cracking 50. Uh, look, 65 is the outlier. I think I don't think we're going to see 60, 65 from him again. Yeah. But I think he's a 50-goal guy. He's fit and he's healthy. He's got a lot of support this year. Um, it should be around 100 points. Yep. He'll, be and, he'll be motivated. He'll be motivated. And I, I don't see why he shouldn't be right there at the end for the heart. I really don't. But, again, I think the team has got to go further this year, and that will help him too. Yep. All right, uh, next question. Eastern Conference. Who is the Caps' biggest threat challenge? Ed? I'm going to go with... Well, let's talk playoffs. I think regular season they're going to win the East right. pretty easily. They've won it the last two years. They're a better hockey team, like Sky said this year. I think they're a much better hockey team than they were the last two years. They are fourth in goals against last year. I think Pittsburgh's the team, mm -hmm. especially, you know, Malkin's back. And if Crosby comes back, Pittsburgh's the team. Yeah. But if he doesn't come back, are they still the team? No, I think the Caps are the team if Crosby's not back. I think the Caps are the best team in the East. If Crosby's back, then I think it's 50-50 it's shot between the two teams. Sky, who do you got for her threat? Boston. We saw what they did last year when it counted, and they still have Timmy T. Yeah. And if you have a great goaltender like Tim Thomas, who can be shut down at times, and he shut down the Caps a few times last year, that's your best competition. You saw what happened in the playoffs last year. Now, you won't have that run every year like Tim Thomas had last year, but if he has 
I don't know, 95% of what he did last year, that's a tough team to beat. You know? Hey, Ted, what do you got? I think there's four teams in the East that can win the conference. Capitals, Penguins with his healthy Crosby, Boston, this guy was saying, or Buffalo, could steal it if Miller gets hot and does Thomas. But I think Pittsburgh is the biggest threat in the regular season. Yeah. I think the Caps and Penguins will fight down the stretch for the uh, regular season first top seed. And I think the two teams will probably end up meeting sometime in the playoffs. I'm with you and Ed on Pittsburgh. I saw what they did without Crosby and without Malkin last year. Uh, I mean, they, they nearly knocked off Tampa. That was a seven-game series. Yep. They've got Malkin back healthy. I love that blue line of theirs. And, you know, we saw in, with the HBO series, that, I mean, they have got the leadership. So I think they are a real threat with or without Crosby. And then if they get Crosby back and he's durable, that could be an amazing Eastern Conference Finals if it gets that far. Absolutely. All right, let's, uh, what, let's tackle one more topic here. I want each. I think this is going to be a fascinating seri- uh, season for, for the NHL. Give me, each of you, two top storylines that you think uh, hockey fans in Washington should follow. It doesn't have to be specific to the Caps. Maybe just league-wide. Ed, what do you got? I think um, it'll be, there'll be a lot of talk all year about realignment. I think yeah. next year... These divisions are gone. There's going to be there's going to be a new setup in the, in the league, so I think realignment's a big issue, and I think the other big issue is is what's going to happen with you know Brendan Shanahan running the off ice stuff with the hits. What's legal? What's not? How's that going to impact the game? You know, Sky has a real strong opinion, which we'll hear from him in a minute. It, it seems like they're trying to take hitting to some degree out of the game. Hmm. Uh, Sky, what do you have for sure? Well, let's start off with the hitting and what Brendan Shanahan is trying to do. What he's trying to do is in hockey. I'm sorry, hockey's about hitting. Uh, that's what we, why we all love it. Yeah. And what he's doing is he's saying, that's <laughs> a legal hit. But Sky, to be fair, when Brendan played, he was pretty rough customer. He was. That's why it's, full, it's kind of ironic that he's doing this. I think something to keep an eye on is that captain of the captain, or of the Capitals. Yeah, I, I confuse myself on that. <laughs> that captain of the Capitals, Mr. Alex Ovechkin, he's a repeat offender. He better watch himself this year because he likes to just throw his body out there. And I guarantee you, he gets suspended at some point this season. And I bet you it's about five to ten game suspension. Yeah, that would hurt. And it's going to hurt the Caps a lot because he is reckless out there. And he needs to grow up and mature and go, hey, I can't do this anymore. I can't do this to my team if we want to win. I can definitely see him getting a five game or more suspension this year because he is a repeat offender. And then a second NHL... You know, something out there. I'm going to say with the Capitals, I still think when the trade deadline comes around, they're going to be looking for two things. A second line center and another defenseman. (laughs) This happens every year, and it's funny how it happens. I bet you that's going to happen again. All right, Ted, give us your storylines. I think the first one would be obviously Sidney Crosby's return. I think Crosby will come back. The thing I'm concerned about with Crosby is he's going to take another hit at some point. And you don't want one of the marquee guys in the NHL being Mark Savard who gets knocked out for a year with another hit. I mean, someone's going to take a run at him. Most players won't. But one of these games, someone's going to realize our team has a good chance to win if we knock this guy out. And someone's going to take a shot at him. And that's, you know, concerning for the league. Second, I think it involves the Capitals, but I think the return of hockey to Winnipeg. I mean, I think the Jets will be a good story this year. I think they'll start off strong, fueled by, you know, big sellouts at MTS Center. But I think the travel's going to get to them. I mean, it's they're going to be a kind of a wild card. I think... If the longer they can last, the more they'll actually make the playoff run. But when will they run out of gas to, you know, steal a punt? <laughs> I, I am going to watch the Sydney story like you. I, I just think it's – when you consider what he was doing in this league uh, prior to getting hurt last year, it was amazing. Yep. And we're all – he's been, he's been out of the lineup now for so long. It's going to be fascinating. And we're all wondering when is he going to come back and what is he going to look like? And then, you know, is there going to be that, that hit? And we don't want that. Uh, and then the second story, and I, I pick up on, on what Ed mentioned about realignment. The Board of Governors for the league are going to convene in December, and apparently that's when they're going to make a decision. And uh, you guys know where I come from on, on the Southeast Division. Uh, go to work, Governors, and get justice returned to Washington. We were once in the best division, and we need something close to it brought back. You're lying, because I've seen you with the Panthers shirts and not before. I don't know what you're talking about. You're right, because they tried to sign me this summer. <laughs> Bring back the Flyers and the Penguins. Let's get that going again. Hey, for, for our first uh, edition of OFB TV, this was fun, and we're going to do it again because uh, you know we have a lot of fun together. And uh, we uh, look forward to having a great season of hockey in Washington. And uh, for OFB TV, John Keeley, and we will see you at Verizon Center this season.